Let's have a photo. It'll keep my mum happy. HMS Northumberland is a cutting-edge Royal Navy frigate. Where 200 sailors live and work. Hi, Jacob. Hello, Chloe. This is Daddy speaking. Heading to the Arctic Circle. Oh, wow. Absolutely stunning. In some of the worst conditions imaginable. It was getting continually smashed by waves. It was unsafe. Frankly, we've got to get on top of it. Worst case is things could explain. Our cameras have been given access to HMS Northumberland's secret four-month deployment. <laughs> at a time of unprecedented pressure from the Russian military. Russian is inbound at red 160. It's a big, big-ass egg bar. I hold one Russian surface vessel at the bearing of 275. Northumberland must defend the UK from enemies who are visible. She is a strange looking ship. And hidden. Side by side with no. submarine guys, we are V close. If we go to war, quite simply, it's too late. And the crew must protect each other. However, your feeling doesn't make you any less of a sailor. We have. What? From the perils of life at sea. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy. Last time. Ah, that's a big one. That is huge. HMS Northumberland was sent to the Arctic to stop a Russian submarine damaging British cables carrying vital UK communications. But a fault with the sonar lost our primary sensor. Allowed the Russians to slip through their fingers. We've lost it. 14,000 tonnes of Russian metal effectively disappear. HMS Northumberland is 350 miles inside the Arctic Circle on a mission to find one of Russia's most dangerous and elusive submarines. It's 7 a.m. For some, it's the end of their shift, but for others, the day is just beginning. You had it all night, Rob. Going to bed. Going to bed. <laughs> Clocking on is Lee Ellis, Northumberland's most experienced submarine hunter. I joined very early at 16. All those years later, I'm still here. I reckon a lot of people look at me with you know, 23, 24 years worth of knowledge already and probably already assume I'm a submarine expert, but I'm nowhere near where I want to be. <clears throat> OK, so, guys, look, I get your pain. You lost the submarine. Lee's leading the search for the missing Russian sub. It beat me, you know, it beat the captain uh, because we all lost it. I assess she's trying to make life difficult for us. So mission focused, regain contact for the uh, submarine. Northumberland needs to locate the Russians before they have a chance to tamper with the deep sea cables that most of the UK's internet and communications rely on. The Russians have a mission, they have a plan in areas which they know are going to receive a reaction. Uh, we simply cannot do nothing, we have to make sure we fully understand where the submarine is. But this particular type of Russian sub is one of the most difficult in the world to find. The Russians have significantly increased their capability in their submarine warfare. It's their priority, and it's because it's effective. Russian submarine can wreak havoc, and they, uh, and they know that. It's been nearly 15 hours since the Russians disappeared, and with no idea which direction they've taken, Lee has a massive search area. Zephyr 08, midships, starboard 15, 325. Without any new leads, Northumberland is following the submarine's last known course. Plot bridge, requesting wind speed and direction. At the helm is 20 year old Phoebe Stead. Starboard 15, altering 240. One of the youngest on board. Um, I drive um, a little Citroen C1. 
um, quite different from a warship. I don't need a big car. I'm not going to go any bigger than a warship. <laughs> I joined the Navy for a challenge, something different. I remember telling my parents. They were a little bit shocked, I think, and I don't know if they thought that I knew what I was letting myself in for. SAT Bridge. Uh, so it's Starbucks Turbines that Cobalt Drive Starbucks shop. It's not every day that you drive in a, uh, a massive warship next to a, a Russian submarine nearby. There is a massive sense of responsibility. It's a little bit daunting. But Phoebe's about to take on even more responsibility. She's just finished training up to join the team hunting subs in the ops room. The thought of me tracking a submarine is, for me, extremely exciting. This is what Type 23 is meant to do, anti-submarine warfare. OK, you've got to be on time. Three minutes left. While the crew focus all their attention on the submarine hunt, it's business as usual below decks. I think it all might need to be a little bit hotter. Down in the galley, that means producing three meals a day for the crew of 200. Let's get it open there. I'll get you any poached eggs. Fried right, eggs. Have whatever you want. So whilst it's a popular place to visit, it's not always the most popular place to work. Uh, yeah. Trainee chef Sahil James is already feeling the strain. This is my first ship, so this is my first deployment. Just so tired, I'm not kidding. I want to sleep. Just want to climb up in my bed, like for 12 days. Just hibernate for 12 days. No room for this meat. Chefs work some of the longest hours on board in the hottest conditions. Can you shove some dishes away, if you don't mind? This was not the deployment. I was picturing the period. I'm feeling to budget bed for the day. Everything all right over there? Yeah, on the carrots. OK. Being at the bottom of the ladder... Can you jump on the sink, please, look? ..means Sahil gets all the worst jobs. There's cash outside. Oh, no, please. This is just like a stepping stone to me. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I'm, I'm just being optimistic about everything and just see how it goes. No rest for the wicked? Just, like, try and enjoy. Come on. When was the submarine's last position plotted? In the ops room, the pressure is growing. It's now been 20 hours since the Russian sub was lost, and so far, all attempts to find it have failed. Situation, uh, we continue to the east, southeast, to uh, hopefully pick her up. Yeah, so. It's so strange. It definitely smells like Now something else is disturbing the crew. Do you smell burning? Yeah. It smells like burning. Yeah. Poisonous fumes are seeping into the upper decks, and no one knows where it's coming from. HMS Northumberland is at emergency stations. The hunt for the Russian sub is on hold, and poisonous fumes are filling the ship. They're investigating. But something is clearly burnt. It's give off a really horrible taste and smell. It gets you after a while. The crew need to find the source of the fumes, which are spreading through the ship via the ventilation system. Smoke alarm. We're activated in number three. In the four world. Marcus Adcock needs to get up to the main mast, where the alarm's been triggered. Who's going up there? Do your face seal check. Absolutely horrible up there. A lot of smoke up there and you can't really breathe. 
With all hands on deck, even Sahil is called up from the galley. 24 minutes. No fire. There is smoke up there. There's nothing on fire. It literally, it's just absolutely melted. The emergency's being caused by a faulty transformer. Now it's out, the fumes begin to clear. Oh shit, mate, those isolations. But the electrics need to be made safe before it can be replaced. So, yeah, definitely circuits two and seven, mate. Yeah. Could be that as well. Yeah. Oh, what, sorry? What warning? No. Well, they've just isolated, it's taken out a bridge. What warning? On the bridge, sir. Uh, what warning? Autopilot. I think they've pulled the wrong fucking circuit, haven't they? Power's been cut to nearly all of the bridge's navigation controls. I think they've pulled the wrong one. What circuit have they fucking... Set. So electrical supplies to the foremast have been isolated. Yes. Clearly we've lost a bit more than perhaps we'd imagine. Yeah, you are talking shit, mate. The other kit has come with it. Marcus needs to get the power back fast. Northumberland can't stay at sea without navigation gear. I, I need those circuits back, see if we can revert the circuits that we've lost to bring the nav kit back on the bridge. <laughs> Restart ventilation in zones three and four. With the fumes clearing... No more smoke. ..the crew can return to their regular jobs. I was just washing the dishes. And then it went off. I was a bit nervous because, like, it's not an exercise. It's actually a real thing, so... It's kind of nervous, but after a while... Today it's a smoke alarm, but it's tomorrow. Who knows? Hello. OK, well, I want to just make sure we can restore that navigational sort of safety on the bridge. Yep, OK, stand by. OK, bridge team. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, here we go. <laughs> Power to the bridge is finally restored. Yeah, perfect. Do you think Yes, straight back here. Pretty much everything back on the bridge. Happy days. That's good. We get midships to zero seven zero. Down in the ops room, there's been no sign of the Russian sub in nearly twenty four hours. Lee is desperate for a fresh lead. The last known position of the submarine. Heading up there. He's playing Northumberland's trump card. I will feel more confident once I can get an air asset up. The Merlin will really nail it down to just try and regain contact with the uh, submarine. Northumberland is lucky to have a state-of-the-art Merlin helicopter on board. Its specialist crew are trained for hunts just like this. Flight observer Luke Maciejewski will be leading the search. So when I get to three, I hit verify. I want to go to six, got six hours. Luke and the flight crew are carrying listening devices to drop in the ocean. Sonar boys will vastly increase the power of the ship's sonar. But there's only enough left on board for one flight. Sonar boys are a means to, to track over a larger search area. We drop these out of the aircraft in patterns or barriers, um, and as they fall from the aircraft, they have a parachute and they descend from the aircraft, hit the water, and they will actively listen for the submarine. We want 30 to the cab. Good start. ACP, Bill. 
command intentions are for Red Claw to launch. The advantage of the helicopter is range and the ability to get out at range at, at quick speeds, which make it very difficult for a submarine to evade once the helicopter's got it. Notoriously, submarines uh, are not keen on helicopters being above them. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. I'm coming. Away from the action on deck, Marcus is on his way to make a special phone call. Home have sent me that. Well, I'm hoping it's a box of my favorite. From there and the team at home, I've got strict instructions to not open it unless I FaceTime. I'll see if he's home, shall we? Hey, mate! <laughs> yeah? Well, do you want me to open it? Yeah. It'll be some weeks before Marcus sees his family again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it now. Yeah? <laughs> I've got a four and a bit year old, um, married. I've got twins who will be two in March and number four on the way, so, yeah, life's, life's full on here, life's full on at home. My wife had to somehow look after three children on her own whilst moving house, buying a new car whilst, you know, seven months pregnant. And that takes a very special type of person. Wow! And, I mean, to this day, I have absolutely no idea how she does it. Oh. I'm gonna eat <laughs> You're going to eat all of them, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst you're physically separated, there's always methods of communication, but it never gets any easier. But I do it almost primarily for the family, to provide for them. What's this? You can eat them all by yourself. That'll see me through the week. You do develop a mental resilience, but it does get a bit more difficult. For them and for us, really, yeah. Turn right. Uh, I'd like to know where that one was. The helicopter is now approaching the location where the Russian submarine was last detected. Submarines, by the, the reason of their being is to be stealthy. They're not meant to be found. They don't want to be found. Trench reporting every minute for six minutes and every three minutes thereafter. Luke must decide the best place to drop the first batch of sonar boys in order to catch any sound from the Russian sub. With only 30 on board, he's under pressure to choose the right spot. We've got boys in ahead. We got a barrier in ahead. Reinitiate subsurface investigate. The sound from the sonar boys is being fed back to the ops room. Subsurface investigate, nothing visual on the yard. Where Phoebe is on shift. We're doing zero five five. Put it in. Oh, put it in. Steady bearing, mate. Right? Having never hunted for a submarine before. First time I've done it for real. It's quite daunting, really, to think there's one quite... not close, but one nearby. So my part is to find them. You're listening for, for um, electrical sources or mechanical sources or even people can um, give a position away. I don't mind if I find it first, it's as long as we find it. The Merlin is now directly above the spot where the Russians were last detected, but that was over 24 hours ago. I'm going to drop down to 2,000 feet. 
anticipating contact fairly shortly. It looks like there's something there. They're investigating a possible one northeast. You don't have to out. HMS Northumberland is in the Arctic, on the trail of a Russian submarine that's one of the world's most elusive. In position north. Three. My intention is to make, establish contact. We'll be in contact for the next four, one and zero minutes. The Merlin has begun tracking a possible object a hundred meters beneath the surface. That's a good thing. The contact is on a course of one one three speed ten knots. As the helicopter moves closer, the ops room are listening in, trying to figure out if this is the Russians. She's increased in speed. Definitely change depth. Yeah. Fair distance. It's gone. It's returned, so it's gone. Whatever it is, change direction too quickly to be a submarine. How are we doing? No, no choice there. The object was probably just marine life. We've got a serious problem. The Merlin's dropped. I see, how many she dropped? Well over 20 boys now, isn't there? They're about to run out of sonar boys. Just trying to come up with a plan to try and regain this submarine. The last known position is quite old now. It's quite difficult for the helicopter to, to search. Uh, when the submarine, quite frankly, could be anywhere now within about 20 miles. Oh dear. Keep it out. On the Merlin, Luke is also running out of ideas. I have cold. Attention to Alpha Red Court to continue tracking for as long as possible. Monitored the last known tracking for the last one hour and four zero minutes. We haven't had contact. We'll monitor it a bit longer, but we would have seen something. So the only other option is to the southeast. With so few sonar boys left, the next search area will be their last roll of the dice. So James, how are you? You got fried chicken on tonight? As I say, I can smell it. Yeah. It does. It's almost dinner time. Right, I'll leave you to it. I'm looking forward to it. And tonight's is special. For the very first time, Sahil is in charge of the galley. These are the stuff that's going in the um, stir fry. So, red cabbage, broccoli, and leeks. He's chosen an ambitious selection of Asian dishes for the ship's 200 hungry sailors. We have about 45 minutes. Pretty exciting to write up. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight things on the board. Weeks into his first deployment, Sahil's finding his feet. But cooking was never the job he had in mind. I would have never expected to be a chef any time in my career. Because, like, before this, I've never really been in the kitchen much. I was going to join the policing force at home, and I said, why not try and join it in the Navy? But um, we weren't able to join at the moment, so you just have to adapt to and just, like, enjoy. 15 minutes before spell is over. With just a quarter of an hour to go and four dishes still to finish, Sahil is feeling the pressure. Because this is when you're starting to rush to get everything out on the counter, make sure everything looks nice. And this is when I start to get nervous. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? I'm listening. <laughs> 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 
Put a bit of mixed herb in it, salt and pepper. Two minutes left. And that's it, ready to go. It is time to open. Sahil's first menu includes plenty of crew favourites, like sweet and sour pork, Chinese fried chicken, and sweet chilli beef. This uh, curry, it's not hot, hot, it's just hot. When I watch people eating my food that I cooked, um, some of the ship's company comes and just say, oh yeah, nice food, chef. Feel good, and that you're making people happy. I feel a bit proud of myself that I can do that for 200 people. is more than 30 miles north of the Russian submarine's last known location, and Luke is running out of new places to look. OK, so it's actually to drop four boys. Uh, once we drop this, the last boy, we drop them. If they're going to find the Russians, it's now or never. Three, two, one. Now. 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 Helicopters dropped uh, a row of boys down to the southeast. Back in the ops room, all eyes are on the feed from the sonar boys. In anti submarine warfare, we are listening out for engines going round and round, propellers going round and round. If someone carelessly drops a hatch, that will produce a sharp spike of sound, which would also attract attention. Right, Romeo Redclaw is hot. Stand by. In the Merlin, they're picking up a fresh lead. Good timing, that. Off sub further investigation to follow. Highest point of contact is 09, lowest point of contact is 95. Only the Ops Room specialist team can ID what's on the feed. Well, looks like it's gone high. It's a high-pitched sound, which means it could be a submarine. And it looks like it's going high again. I've just got to wait for the updates. I think it's good news. Get as close as I can. Flash, riser bearing 210. There's no doubt now. Rickroll is hot to altered. Visual the surface. It is the Russians. I have detected prop sub 7221. It's rare enough to detect a Russian submarine on the sonar. In a contact. Speed 8 knots. But almost unheard of to get eyes on from the surface. smile on his face. Absolutely. Like, it's almost like we had some kind of fucking plan, eh? Officer Watch P. Well, we are in a position to uh, track the submarine. After the 48-hour hunt, finding the Russian sub is cause for celebration. But now, to keep Britain's vital communications cable safe, Northumberland can't afford to be given the slip again. There's always a temptation to get excited about this kind of stuff. But we've got days and days and days of this to be doing. Yes. We've got thousands of miles of ocean. So we need to not be overconfident, make sure that we think as hard and as far ahead enough as possible that we don't get surprised. 
The truck is holding on 009. Northumberland is firmly on the submarine's tail. It's really steady, we're parallel and it's, well, it's in front of us and we're just behind. Happy? But it's the end of Phoebe's shift on the sonar. We all worked really well, so I'm really proud of everyone. I'm really, really, yeah, I'm happy. I'm going straight to bed, um, have a shower, get to bed, and then back up in less than six hours. Let's hope it's still around, we can still track it. Close the records. <laughs> it's been a very successful day for the crew of the Merlin. But flight observer Luke has another important job to attend to. Yeah, I'm very excited. My wife's pregnant. It's being as you, you'd expect it to be, dealing with it on my own and on her own. It's a lot easier when you've just got your job to think about. But I can only imagine how, how hard it's been for, for my wife back home, doing what she's doing on her own, having moved house on her own as well. It's like, her, it's like herding cats. He's been waiting for a free moment to break the news to his parents back home. Hi, Mum. Hello. Hi, Dad. You're going to be grandparents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I reckon it could be a boy. <laughs> All right, lots of love, everyone. I'm, I'm going to go. So everything's settled down now. We're back into the position where I want to be, which is maintaining the mission of tracking the uh, submarine. Northumberland has been tailing the Russians all night, but the captain is about to try a new tactic. We are closing the range on her. Uh, 006 decimal seven. 7,000. It should be closer than that. He wants to close in on the sub to let the Russians know they've been found. We are very close to the submarine. Well, probably parallel. If they were on the surface, we would definitely see faces. At this distance, the Russians are bound to hear Northumberland and know they've been rumbled. We're in a nice position now. Not going to uh, force her into doing anything silly, so we'll just settle down, maintain the course and speed, Safe. and relax. Time, two, two, five, three, contact six, two, zero, zero. Frequency steady, frequency steady, frequency shift low. OK, shit. What the hell was that? I've just saw it, yeah. What happened? Northumberland has been hit. What the fuck have I just hit? I'm increasing speed to eight knots. HMS Northumberland has just been hit. What's happened? The submarine altered course. As you can care. She's actually at the array. The submarine crashed into our array. The crew think the Russians turned sharply and collided with the ship's sonar array, which hangs beneath the hull. See you there. Submarine threat warning. Situation. Assessment is that submarine clipped our array. Right, is there any indication we've got any defects, damage? Right, the Russian submarine has conducted quite an aggressive move to starboard, come straight towards us, uh, but all indications was she hit us. She knew where we were, she knew what course we were on. I'm just trying to think why she's done that. The crew must decide if the move was deliberate. Northumberland could still be in danger. She put bow directly to us, which means she was altering her course for a reason and attempted a very high revving at the same time as I could hear the submarine. She hit us. I'm worried about the ship's safety. She could have done it on purpose. If this was to happen again, how are we going to play it out next time? 
that came back and did it again. And it shows more intent. If she's shaping up to hit us, absolutely. The captain needs more information before deciding if he should retaliate. It's hard to make the decision, isn't it? The Russian Navy is incredibly astute. They can be extremely aggressive. And they know exactly what they want to achieve. We're going to give it a couple of minutes to see if she's trying, trying to cut across my stern again, and then we'll see what we'll do next. That means doing more manoeuvring so, and trying to establish what she's doing. Everyone just take a deep, deep breath. She's drawing right. Yeah. Drawing right quickly now. The submarine appears to be heading slowly east, away from Northumberland. It's quite a large operation of starboard. She's known where we are. She's demonstrated that she's capable of finding us. I think she just got it a bit wrong. Well, it's a miscalculation. Yeah. They miscalculated silly manoeuvre. We did the right thing. When you're working against uh, an active enemy, you need to just draw breath. Let, let things settle down. What you don't need to do is run around and start flapping. That was nearly home time there. The crew must settle down quickly, so Northumberland can still track the Russian submarine to protect the communications cables lying on the seabed. OK, so, guys, reset back to normal. I want to get the array down to the best depth. Prepare to stream the array. <laughs> oh, you sod. We don't have the connect mode 2. There's no mode 2 showing at the moment. Oh. Uh, yeah. Lost sonar contact. The sonar screens have gone blank and all trace of the Russian submarine has vanished. Lost contact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big bearing errors. Over what range is that? That was six miles away. Six miles in an eight, what, eight, eight degree area? Yeah. Bloody hell. They need to work out what's gone wrong. So the captain is waiting for a report as to how we can fix this. But unfortunately, at the moment, the uh, weapon engineers don't know what the defect is. Sorry, I think she's now. Yeah, we should work out where she is. You think that's what the problem was? Yeah. The screen where we would normally be able to track a submarine, we're not able to do that. It's bad news. So, what's happening? Did the reset. Yeah. No impact, though, to the active picture, so it's still... it's dull. No, so we lost active receive. Yeah, so we can make noise, we just can't see anything back through the array. Um, recommendation is we've gone as far as we can now. The damage to the sonar is too severe to be mended at sea. It's uh, alongside fix. The mission's collapsing. It is end of mission. OK. Just the entire sonar needs to be replaced. Just had a discussion with the captain. Um, the way ahead is uh, requires some further investigation from shoreside. So intentions is to head south. Northumberland must leave the Russian submarine and return to port for repairs. Another Royal Navy vessel will take over. It is frustrating. It is not great news. And I go into Faz Lane, hoping to fix it, uh, not knowing how long that fix might take before I go out again. 
deeply frustrating, but uh, that's the way it goes at sea sometimes. Northumberland must now leave the Arctic and head south through the North Atlantic, back to Scotland. Oh, Sarge. Hello. It's a bitter blow for the crew. Morning. But down in the galley, it's business as usual. I've been up since 4 a.m. Well, everybody else is tucked up comfortably in bed. <laughs> Sahil has just passed his probation and is now a fully fledged chef. Thank you, though. Helping turn out 200 meals every shift without batting an eyelid. I'm not the junior chef anymore. I've been doing more cooking than chopping fish. So that's a start. I feel really proud of myself for doing it because, like, uh, it was hard. It's not bad, though. Fully done at 9 o'clock. <laughs> I think I've grown into a salty sea dog now, being on ship. It's, it's something I want to enjoy. It's just good. You got bubbles? Oh, I've got them. There's good news, too, for 20-year-old submarine hunter Phoebe Stead. All done. Thank you. She's been called to the captain's cabin. Try and keep it clean. Perfect. Thanks, Lil. Oh, sorry. Her contribution in the ops room has been noticed. Thanks, Phoebe. Look at you. I'm, I'm boiling in this already. I am proud to find a submarine, especially when you go through training, you've worked so hard. It's a massive achievement. Good, thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. Ease, thank you. Sir, Phoebe Stead joined Northumberland in January of this year. Most recently in the officer, she was noticed early on for her work ethic. It's her first ever promotion, moving her up from the Navy's lowest rank. Well, I'm Phoebe Stead, so... You have thoroughly impressed me. Hopefully this is the route to a bigger step for you. I expect you now to pass your knowledge and your ethos on to those people around you and below you in particular. You should be hugely proud of what you've achieved in nine months. Are you? Yeah, hugely proud, yeah. Good. She has the indefinable policy, which revolves around a desire to do better and no more. Then right, Williams takes a photo for you, so you can send it to Mum on WhatsApp. Williams, you. you can send it to your mum. She won't put it on Facebook. <laughs> Carry on, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Carry on. Emotional. I didn't expect to be emotional. A, bit, a little bit surprised what he said, but going on my parents now. I'm really happy. Yeah. <laughs> How are we doing, NT? Midships, dead 215. Northumberland's journey back to port is nearly complete. People go to work and sit in an office. Welcome to my office. It's now a race to fix the broken sonar and get back to sea. Because the threat from Russia is far from over.